Welcome to this Tutor to You topic video that looks at China's South North Water Transfer Project, which is an example of a large scale water management scheme. This is Paper 2, Unit C, The Challenge of Resource Management. The South North Water Transfer Project is a large scale scheme in China that moves huge quantities of water from the humid south of the country to the arid north. The region has experienced rapid population growth and is home to 200 million people, including the mega cities of Beijing, which is pictured on the screen, and Tajin. The region has also seen significant economic development, meaning that there is a demand for irrigation for farming and for water for thirsty manufacturing industries. This area was previously reliant on groundwater supplies. However, the water table below Beijing has dropped significantly because of over abstraction, actually by five metres per year. And any new wells have to now be dug at least one kilometre deep to access water. So the transfer scheme was introduced to address the issue of water demand and availability. Let's have a look at the scheme in a bit more detail. The project was first considered in the 1950s, but construction didn't begin until 2003, with the aim of moving 12 trillion gallons of water each year over 100 kilometres from the Yangtze River Basin in the south to the Yellow River Basin in the north. The project aimed to use three different routes. Starting off with Route 1, this was the eastern route which was completed in 2013. This first phase provides water to the city of Tianjin, which is pictured on the screen and is home to 15.6 million people, and Wahei, which has 2.8 million people, both for domestic and industrial uses. This route makes use of existing rivers, lakes and canals. However, these were all heavily polluted by agricultural runoff and industrial waste, so they needed significant clearing up. It is now vital that farmers and local industries keep these waterways clean, otherwise a project will just be transferring contaminated water from one place to another, which will harm human health and will affect fishing industries in the region. Let's move on to Route 2. This is the central route and was completed in 2014. This second phase provides water to 20 cities in the north of China, including the capital city of Beijing, which has a population of 21 million people. This route has a huge reservoir at Dangjingku, which you can see on the screen, and this provides a good supply of water. However, it did mean that 300,000 people were displaced as the valley was flooded behind the dam. There are some other issues though, Farmers in the region are not benefiting from either of these transfer routes. Local ecosystems have been disturbed by the changing pattern of drainage and flows of water and the use of open channels means that lots of water is lost through evaporation. And finally, let's have a look at Route 3. This is a western route, although this is currently on hold. This final phase involves building several dams in the upper Yangtze Basin, along with hundreds of kilometres of tunnels through the Bayakala Mountains, which will divert about 200 cubic kilometres of water each year from some of the major rivers that flow through southern China, including the Mekong and the Brahmaputra. Both of these rivers are transboundary, meaning that diverting water from them could affect the countries downstream. Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, Myanmar and Laos for the Mekong, which is already impacted by existing dams upstream in China, and India and Bangladesh for the Brahmaputra. At the moment, this phase is on hold as the construction and environmental costs are deemed too high, and there is also the issue that the route crosses an area that experiences earthquakes quite frequently. So what's the future for this project? Well, since the 1960s, the south of China has seen more and more drought events, meaning that the water surplus is not as significant as it once was. Therefore, there are concerns that the south-north water transfer project won't actually be able to supply all of the water that it's needed in the arid north. The project has also been played by controversies. Some of the people displaced claim to have been forced to sign relocation agreements. Fish farmers on the Dongping Lake have complained that the water transferred from the polluted Yangtze has killed their fish. Scientists are also concerned that the project will increase water evaporation losses. 
And of course, there is the cost to consider. The South North Water Transfer Project is the world's most expensive water transfer scheme, costing around 79 billion US dollars so far, which has mainly been funded by Chinese taxpayers. Many question whether the benefits are actually worth it. Both the rate of population growth and economic growth are slowing down, so perhaps such a huge scheme is no longer needed and smaller projects with less of an impact on the environment might be more appropriate. That concludes this Tutor to You topic video focusing on China's South North Water Transfer Project. Thank you for watching.